Whoa, holy cannoli. I just fell over. That's not good. <laughs> ah, 2021 can touch my man juice. What's going on everyone? Welcome to the final video of 2021. Today we're doing a Q&A and we're also looking back at some of the greatest moments of my 2021 career on this lovely, wonderful, flawless platform called YouTube. And I know a lot of you are very interested in the giveaway and don't worry, we'll get to that. If you are selected as a winner, then I will reach out to you within an hour of this video being uploaded. So please pay attention to your social media accounts. But let's talk about the achievements that we have earned over the past year. First of all, we've had a ton of videos go semi-viral this year, like the DMC videos, the Queef Girl video, multiple Charlie D'Amelio videos, the Ohm Record Delirious and Keemstar saga, Riley Reed, the porn star having her marriage destroyed on Twitter, Holly Boob, where Jug Squad changed a Hollywood sign into Holly Boob, and that was pretty funny, and even Poopy Pants Biden. Not only that, but we also moved live streams from Twitch back onto YouTube via my second channel, Zero Plus, and that's been a lot of fun. One of my tweets was literally a thumbnail for an Optimus video, which was just amazing to see. Amaranth, the queen of hot tub streams, commented a little winky face on one of my videos talking about her gas station, which made me nut all over the place, alright? I won't lie. I just hit the microphone, but that's because I'm so excited talking about this. I nutted all over the place when I saw her comment on that video. I've gained hundreds of subscribers this year, the most that I've gained since probably 2019. I've also found the personality and style of this channel too, which is great. It's more organized, it's clean, it's simple. This was also the first year that I've ever collaborated with any other creator on the platform. I collabed with a bunch of awesome people this year, like The Wall on multiple videos, and I recently collabed with one of my longtime subscribers and friends, Omega, on a video exposing a zoo file. And honestly, collabing is a lot of fun, and I'm excited for 2022 because I have a couple collabs lined up already, so that's gonna be awesome. My band Water on Red released two EPs and a single from our upcoming third album, which will be out next year, and we're even releasing one more single tomorrow on the 31st, which is awesome. It's called Anxiety, and it comes out tomorrow, and there will be a music video for it on the Water on Red channel. So guys, do me a favor, check out that video when it launches tomorrow. I'll put the link to the channel in the description below. It's only if you're a fan of heavy music like deathcore and metalcore and all that. If you're just in the pop or country or whatever, it might not be your cup of tea. Earlier this year, back in January, I finally built a custom PC, and that has really helped me develop some fantastic videos. And the channel is also close to becoming monetized, which is just fantastic to see. We're not going to talk about my real life outside of YouTube, but I will say that at this current moment in my life, I'm very happy. I have a lot going on in my life and it's pretty exciting. I don't think I've been this happy since maybe 2019 or something. I mean, 2019 was just a fun year, but I feel like 2022 will be even better. So let's just pretend that outside of YouTube, 2020 and 2021 just never existed. But with that being said, we have a ton of questions to get through. So please sit down, shut up, grab some paint thinner, a bucket of squirrel jerky or whatever you prefer to eat, and let's get started. So the first question is from my friend Sandwich Maker on the Discord server. She asks me, so when did you and my brother Nate start dating? I'm curious. I mean, I'm 100% happy for you, homie, but it was so sudden. I didn't even know he was into polyamory. You got my full support. Serious question, what made you want to start a band? And do you ever plan on covering songs by other artists someday? YouTube makes me want to chuck a baby out a window. Yeah, me too. So to answer your first question, Nathan and I became boyfriend and slut when I accidentally fell inside of him when we were freshmen, which was like back in 2015. He insisted that I stay inside of him for the remainder of our lives, but I started to get a cramp in my dongle. For your second question, for all of you that don't know, I have a band called Water on Red with one of my friends, Sersha. And I love this question so much. So I've been very passionate about music. When I went into middle school, I really started diving into different bands and artists. And when I turned 14 or 15, I started to learn how to scream like some of my favorite metal artists. I have some old recordings of me screaming, which sound awful. And I'm going to play a clip of one of them for you right now so you can feel the ear cancer. So 
So I recorded that back in like 2014 or 2015. Now here's the most up-to-date scream that I can do. Or I guess I should say, here is my vocal progression. Here's how far I've come since that point. <laughs> I know, right? It's still pretty bad. <laughs> I've always been passionate about music. Eventually, I wanted to start a real band and make real music. Uh, my ex came up with the Water on Red name. Uh, pretty awkward, I know, right? I created the logo for it back in 2019. I posted it online. Eventually, Sersha, my current bandmate and longtime friend, wanted to hop on the project. Thus, Water on Red was born. I even took a bass last August because I didn't just want to do vocals. I wanted to be kind of like ambidextrous when it came to music. I also make beats on the side, too. As for covers, we did want to put out a few covers this year, but we didn't get the chance to. I wanted to do a cover of Unravel, you know, the Tokyo Ghoul theme, and I think I wanted to do a song by Oasis. It might have been Wonderwall, but I have no idea, I can't remember. And Sersha wanted to do an Avenged Sevenfold song and a Dragon Ball opening track. I won't promise anything, but maybe next year after we release album number three, we'll put out some covers. I mean, who knows? Next up is Chris or Magic Belt. When is the next room tour? I mean, do you guys want an updated room slash office tour for 2022? Let me know in the comments because my setup is currently much different from last year's tour. Remember that time I made your mom laugh and cream my meme? Oh, I do remember that time, Chris. I remember everything. Even the times you didn't make me laugh. How long can you fart? I could fart long enough to numb my butthole. How far can you pee? I could pee to a moderate distance. Ever saw something creepy looking outside your backyard? One time I saw a reflection of me in the window and it, it was during a time where I was just about to have a panic attack too. So I just saw instant disappointment in the reflection. But Mosa wants to know what my inspirations were to start a YouTube channel. Were there channels that I liked? Or was YouTube a side hobby that I enjoyed? Yeah, so filmmaking has always been my number one passion. Music is a close second though. And looking at pictures of Amaranth is number three. But I've always enjoyed filming content first. Whether it was something cinematic or something casual like gameplay or let's plays or something, I made my first YouTube channel back in 2011 when I was like 11 years old. And you know, I was mostly inspired by old YouTube creators like Smosh and Jax Films and Ray William Johnson, if you guys remember who that is. You know, all of the original channels that made the platform what it is. I just liked creating content even if nobody watched. It was just entertaining for me to film a stupid video with my old Canon camera and watch my disturbing creations back through my camera lens but i didn't really get into gameplay casual commentary until 2016 when the genre became popularized by creators like leafy and luna and all of those guys i still love filmmaking but i really love the way my channel currently is and i wouldn't change it for the world although one day i would love to pursue my passion of cinematic filmmaking again and create some awesome cinematic videos or porn i mean whichever one comes first i have all sorts of ideas written down too that i would love to turn into proper scripts and shoot We'll have to see though, and yes, some of them are porn. One of my ideas is to shoot a pornography on Mars when it becomes possible to travel to Mars regularly. All right, I'm just kidding about the porn stuff, by the way. But now that I'm thinking about it, I might consider writing down some scripts. I mean, I'm thinking about it right now. Stepsister gets stuck underneath a rock or something on Mars, and Stepbro has to come in. I mean, just imagine it. Just imagine the disgust. So Omega wants to know what my motivation was to keep me going during my breakaway from YouTube when I, uh, you know, broke my jaw. And he also wants to know what I hope happens to gaming during 2022. And I have some good answers for this. These are some great questions. So my biggest motivations, and this is gonna sound super cheesy and cliche, was number one, you guys, and number two, my new goals in life. You know, despite everything I had to go through, the surgery, the pain, etc., the first thing that kept me going was you guys of course tons of you kept checking up on me asking how i was doing wishing me well telling me i didn't deserve what happened to me and that honestly motivated me to, keep, to be patient and soon enough two months later once i got the wires and arch bars out of my mouth and i was able to speak again i got right back to work to make videos for all of you and like i mentioned before my second motivation was creating new goals in life and thinking about my future i started this year with a group of friends and a girlfriend no job lots of stress zero goals in life and now i'm ending the year alone but with a job and an exciting future. I probably wasted the last maybe two years of my life just messing around being dumb, but now I'm working towards getting new equipment for my office, saving money for a new car, for an apartment, trying to be independent,
independent. I'm working at a job right now, but in January, I'm either going to move uh, up into a new position of my current job or switch jobs. Either way, I'm excited because it's something new for me. I'm also not actively looking to meet new people because at the end of the day, the only person guaranteed to stick by me until the end is myself. And I know that sounds super narcissistic, but it's the truth, and I would rather die standing than live on my knees trying to please people. I'm making my own decisions from here on out and living the life that I want. Sorry, I kind of went on a rant there, but yeah, you guys get it. And when it comes to the gaming sphere in 2022, I really hope that developers like AAA developers and big publishers stop releasing half-assed pieces of garbage and start putting effort into the games they release to the public. Because it seems like over the last few years especially, we've been getting these games that are just unpolished, not finished, tons of bugs, and a lack of content in them, and zero passion or love in them whatsoever. And for some reason, there's people out there that will literally defend these games because of the brand they are. You guys know what games I'm talking about. It's it's ridiculous. I'm not going to pay $60 for a AAA game if it's going to be half-assed and not even full of content worth grinding for. It's stupid. Where did you get your name? Like, what was the thing that gave you the idea for it? I love this question a lot. So, when I rebranded my YouTube channel back in late 2018, and yes, by the way, I rebranded my YouTube channel back in late 2018, I needed a new, unique username. Now, when I come up with usernames for anything, I typically take two nouns and I just combine them together to make one word. At the time, Operation Absolute Zero released for Black Ops 4, and I basically made the new operator in the game Zero my main, my go-to character. And I took the name Zero, and I applied it to the word Omens, because I thought Omens was just a cool word. And I guess I could also attribute me picking the word Omens, one of my favorite bands of all time, Bad Omens, but I really didn't think of the band when creating my username. So I took Zero, I took Omens, I combined it together, and BAM! Why does Die Rise suck? I learned it recently and it's pretty fun. Well, who said Die Rise sucked? It's one of the best zombies maps in the world. I made a whole video on why it's great. You should check it out. Do you think it's funny to screenshot other people's NFTs like me? It's, yeah, it's funny. It's hilarious. I honestly hate NFTs and people who buy them. NFTs are the dumbest thing to ever exist. It's just a giant scam. Call me a hypocrite because I invest in cryptocurrency, but NFTs are literally giving value to items online that are completely worthless. So yeah, I think it's pretty funny and I would recommend everyone watching this video screenshot other people's NFTs because they are literally worthless and the people who consistently buy and sell NFTs every day pee sitting down. Ooh, we got a Twitter question. We never get these. If bald people work in a restaurant, do they still need to wear a hairnet? Well, as a bald person myself, I can confirm that I have absolutely no idea. I've never worked in a restaurant and I really hope I never do. My guess is yes because everyone should be treated as an equal, but I don't know. I'm not a restaurantologist or a baldologist, alright? I'm just a guy that's bald and makes videos for women who wash paper plates. How has your immense fame affected you and how could I ever possibly hope to reach such levels of astronomical renown? Well, to answer your second question, you can't because I am so popular that nobody can and ever will reach my top 1% popularity status. I think that basically answers your first question as well. What books have you read? Good question, Yosef. So while my jaw was broken, I took up reading as a hobby. I've always hated reading, but now I actually like it. So I've read The Wicked Deep by Shia Earnshaw, which is a fictional story about a town called Sparrow where three sisters were sentenced to death for witchery. You know, back in the old days of the United States, we used to murder people for apparently being witches because we were stupid. Anyway, two centuries later, the sisters return and they end up hijacking some people's bodies and they murder boys and it's great. It's a nice read. The ending kind of pissed me off, but other than that, it was a great read. I've also read the first book in the You series. You guys know the show You, right? It's on Netflix. It's a very popular show. Well, I'm reading the book and they are very different from the show, but I honestly like the books way better. First book was solid. I'm currently reading Hidden Bodies. I'm almost done with it. It's the sequel to you. And that book has also been great. And I recently bought the third book, which I plan to start as soon as Hidden Bodies is over. And because I love Carolina Kepnes, the author, I bought her other novel called Providence, which I'll read after I'm finished with the You saga. Okie dokie, boys and girls. The moment you've all been waiting for. I am now going to be announcing the two winners of my first gift card giveaway. So I know a lot of you just want to hear who won or not, and we'll get to that right now, alright? Get off my ass. This is the first giveaway that I've ever done, and the amount of people who have hopped on board is absolutely incredible and mind-boggling. I mean, 39 people specifically. I wish I could give you all something for your support, but I'm not a miracle worker or Jeffrey Bezos or a hooker if you're only interested in catching crabs. 
I can only pick two people from this wheel, and I know I'm gonna lose a lot of you as subscribers because I know a majority of you have only subbed just for this giveaway and probably plan on leaving afterwards, but honestly, you shouldn't unsubscribe if you lose because number one, I post great content and I think you'll enjoy my videos as well, and number two, I plan on doing more giveaways in the future and I don't plan on picking the same winners twice, so everyone will hopefully get a chance to win at some point, but thanks to everyone who is subscribed right now, not just for the giveaway, but because you all enjoy my content. Without further ado, let's pick the first winner. As you can see from the list on the right side of your screen, we have a massive amount of people, both from the YouTube channel, the Discord server, and even on Twitter. Lots of people from Twitter. Shout out to everybody on this list right now. Let's go ahead and pick the first winner. Let's go ahead and click this beautiful wheel here, and... Oh my god, this is LSD warning. I mean, LSD warning. Epilepsy warning, you idiot. Who won? Oh, Omega is the first winner. Omega is the first winner. Congratulations, homie. I will be messaging you as soon as this video goes live and figure out uh, what kind of gift card you want, whether it's a PSN, a Xbox, or a Steam gift card. All right. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now we're going to pick the second winner and see how this goes. Yeah, if, you're, if you have epilepsy, you might want to just click off the screen right now. Oh, sweet lord, Goku Monkey has officially won. He is the second winner. Thank you very much for everybody that participated. I will be messaging the winners as soon as the video goes live, and we'll go from there. But like I said, don't unsubscribe. I, I'm going to do more giveaways in the future. Please stay subscribed. Keep supporting the content. <coughs> Oh, I had I had cayenne pepper and it's in my throat. <laughs> but yeah, stay subscribed to keep supporting the content because the more support we get on these videos, the bigger the giveaways will be in the future. And I definitely plan on doing more because this was obviously a huge hit with you guys. Ripper wants to know my thoughts on the collapse of the American dollar that will occur on March 31st, 2022. And this is a great question. So I mean, as long as my crypto portfolio stays intact after the United States dollar burns into the ground, then I'll be all right. If you guys want my terrible financial advice, Invest in metals like gold and silver because you're supposed to wipe your ass with paper and metal is forever. But I'm not a financial expert, so don't listen to anything that I just told you. If a man is a man that is a man that went to a mall of a square circle of the sky, then tell me what is the nose of water that is in the man is a man that is not the is the man which is the square root of the man arm. Write me a trigonometric equation. Uh, I, I got a question for you, buddy. Have you ever played with dog's balls? Bedrock Plays Java wants to know what I think of the commentary community nowadays, and this is such a great question. Honestly, the commentary community could be so much better. The problem is that, well, one, this community peaked in 2016, and two, YouTube has really cracked down on super edgy content, so it's much harder to get away with stuff like that. I hate to say it, but the commentary community was better when it was toxic and dramatic, because that led to some awesome stories and situations that provided tons of entertainment, like Leafy vs. Keem for example. That debacle was incredible. But these days it's super boring and it's full of people like me who make videos for women who wash paper plates. Like I love my videos and I know you guys love them as well, but imagine if I could get away with much more. I truly hope that we reach a point where YouTube backs off and lets people create toxic edgy content again without any repercussions, but we could only hope and dream. But don't get me wrong though, there are some great commentary channels existing right now, like Sensitive Society, Optimus, Charlie, Mudahar, My Friend The Wall, and tons of others. Those guys are living proof that you don't have to be super toxic and edgy to succeed in the world of commentary today. And I guess in a way, I am also proof, but I don't want to jerk myself off too much. What got you into YouTube? Drugs. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Like I mentioned earlier, I've always loved filmmaking and creating content ever since I was a child. And before YouTube really dominated the internet, people like me always thought that you had to make it in the film and TV industry in order to create. And not just creating as a hobby, but also creating as a job. YouTube was probably the best outlet for people like me to upload content to and make it big. And of course, after watching people like Smosh and Jax Films and other pioneers of YouTube dominate on this website, I kind of thought, hey, maybe I could try this out and see if it works out better than chasing my dreams in the film and TV industry. And even though I'm not a big YouTuber, even though this isn't technically my job and I'm not making money off of any of these videos, I still consider this YouTube channel and this community a big fat W. I'm succeeding in my own way, and that's pretty cool. Are you a dude? Is she a dude? 
Um, I'm a UH-60 Blackhawk military helicopter. By the way, I don't care if people are upset by me making an identification joke. Stop typing your hate comment right now and go outside and pet some grass. I'm bad at questions, so hi. Hey, Cisco, how are you, man? What's going on? What's up, man? Hope you had a good holiday. Are you have to go even further than beyond for what if and door hath a have a girlfriend? Oh god, I'm having a stroke. Um, I don't have a girlfriend. I don't want a girlfriend. I don't even want friends. I just want to be left alone. <laughs> when is room tour 2021? All right, room tour 2021 is not happening. It's way too late for that. But again, if you guys want one for 2022, let me know because the setup is much different from last year's. I think 2020 we did one. Unless I deleted that video. I, I have no idea. I don't remember. How many miles would it take to get to the square root of the Pythagorean theorem converted to df dt equals lim ft plus h minus ft slash h to the 69th power in cubic meters approximately 1.21 gigawatts of ethereal energy will it take to get to your mom's house asking for a friend and then there's a video link what the hell is this <laughs> I, uh, I think I have ear cancer. So Colin, to answer your question, it honestly depends on how much crack you smoke and how fast your 2021 Subaru WRX STI can go without making fart noises, especially when skidding down your mother's sweaty back after I'm done doing a hibbity dibbity with her. But if she's a freak in the sheets, then she's a terrorist in the streets. Can I get an amen, people? He's nuts. <laughs> Gotti. <laughs> it's real funny. <laughs> Why did you pursue a YouTube career? That's a great question, Leith. You know, like I said before, filmmaking, old school YouTube inspired me, I loved creating as a hobby, and tons and tons of drugs. So this is such a good question and I'm saving this for last on purpose. Kadena on Twitter wants to know what three historical, mythological, or real dead or alive people I would sit down with on stream and talk to and what we would talk about. This is such a good question. So the first person on my list would be Elon Musk because he's developing so many projects right now. He has tons of ideas and I really want to pick his brain and see how far he wants to take humanity. Number two, and this might be a controversial pick, but I would probably choose Jesus. Now I'm not a religious person by any means. I don't believe in Jesus or God or any of that, but according to science, Jesus or someone like Jesus existed at some point in history and I kind of want to sit down with that person and see what they were all about, whether they were a truly powerful human or just some random carpenter with tons of skills that people liked for some reason. You know, I just want to hear what they think about the modern world and how millions of people worship him. And I'd like to do the same with Muhammad and even Abraham at some point just to kind of get their takes on everything after explaining what happened to the world after they died. You know, they, they don't really understand iPhones and government and stuff. So I think that would be really cool to do. But Jesus would be first on that list. I'm sure Elon would also have some questions for the guy. My third and final pick would be the DMT jesters. So let me explain a little bit. DMT is a hallucinogenic drug and the theory is that it's inside the human body and when you die, DMT is released into your brain causing you to trip absolute massive amounts of balls and seeing tons of crazy stuff. And th this is only a theory, but it's supposed to be an answer to people who die and then come back to life and claim to see things like God and heaven and all sorts of other illusions. People who take DMT describe it as traveling to another dimension. It's like a spiritual journey. And a majority of people who take DMT have described having a shared experience where they see these jesters who mock and tease them. The jesters are kind of like bullies. And what we as humans have interpreted from these jesters is that they mock and tease you in order to teach you a valuable life lesson. And the lesson is something along the lines of either you shouldn't care what others say about you in your real life or to not take yourself so seriously. And I just want to meet one of these jesters from the DMT trip and see whether they live in a different dimension than us, or if they're just a figment of our imagination that only comes into existence after taking DMT. And if they are from another dimension, maybe the jester could explain some stuff about our existence, why we exist, what happens when we die, etc. You know, the most obvious questions of the universe. So imagine having Elon Musk, Jesus, or the other two prophets of their respected religion, and one of these DMT jesters and I just sitting around a round table on a podcast talking about, I don't know, just talking about life and the universe and why we're here and what the hell is going on. All right, now that we've covered the giveaway, the questions, the accomplishments, it's time that we set up our goals for 2022. So I made a 
list at the beginning of 2021. I guess a list of resolutions, if you want to call it that, and I basically failed most of them this year for multiple reasons. A lot of real-world events limited my motivation and physical ability to push me to reach those goals, so I made a new list of resolutions for 2022 and I already started them. Some of the goals that I want to achieve are, number one, to get a stable job, which I have, and although this job is just seasonal, I already have another job lined up for late January, and that's gonna be awesome, and it will pay even more which is great. Number two is to finally hit 2,000 subscribers on YouTube. I really thought that we were going to hit 2k this year, but I'm just happy that this channel is once again growing. I thought that my channel was dead after I quit full-time streaming back in 2019 after hitting 1k subscribers, but I've gained more views this year and subscribers than any other year prior, and the amount of people subscribed and watching my videos now is incredible. We're totally hitting 2k this year. It's gonna happen. Number three is to read a book, which, uh, Believe it or not, I've read almost three books in the last three months, and they were big chapter books too. Yeah, take that, Mrs. M. You thought I was never going to be able to read a big chapter book. You laughed at me, but I proved you wrong, lady. I bet you pee sitting down. I never read books by myself that were over 300 pages long, so I'm happy that my reading skills have improved and that I'm actually comfortable lifting a book up ready to read without feeling overwhelmed. I plan on reading a ton more books next year too. Number four is to spend less time on social media, specifically my own personal personal social media accounts with my family and friends. I mean, I stopped posting and scrolling consistently on social media since I broke my jaw, and spending less time on social media has really opened up my third eye, and not in a kinky or weird way either. I used to spend an hour every morning on TikTok alone. Now I just don't even watch TikTok on my phone. I don't check my Facebook or Snap all the time in the morning. I just wake up and go with the flow, and I'm gonna keep doing that. Number five is to get a full sleeve on my left arm. I've had a tattoo sleeved planned out since I was a senior in high school. The kanji on my left arm is just the start of a massive Japanese canvas of colors and life that I plan on getting inked onto my arm. And by the way, for all of you that don't know, I have some kanji on my arm. And usually when people ask me what it means, I just tell them it's my takeout order. Anywho, I've been putting off this sleeve for a long time, and this is the year that I'm finally going to get that tattoo to sleeve completed on my body and I'm gonna look really hot and all women will love me and maybe I'll get some respect around here. <laughs> Number six is to get really really good at bass. I've been playing bass for over a year now and I want to get to the point that I can play classic rock songs without a problem. And number seven is to release a brand new Water on Red record. We have the art, the name, and six tracks completed so far and we plan on releasing a new single tomorrow like I said, so stay tuned for that. Album three will be out sometime in 2022. Anyway, those were my goals for the new year. I'm very confident that we can reach them and I won't stop grinding until I reach those goals and more. It's like Logan Paul always used to say, the grind don't don't stop, low gangster. Now buy the merch. Oh my god, I really want to sell merch at some point. Subscribe to the channel right now so that I could sell merch to you in the future. Anywho, there you go. That's the 2021 Zero Omens Q&A giveaway movie special La La Palooza, whatever you want to call it. I put in a ton of work into editing this video over the last 24 hours, so it would mean a lot if you guys could just like the video, comment below whether you enjoyed it or not, and uh, subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And please, stick around for 2022 because we have a lot of exciting bangers coming up that you won't want to miss. With that being said, I hope you guys have a fantastic new year, and if you don't celebrate New Year's, then you're probably in North Korea, and uh, I, I just don't think you're supposed to be watching this video, so get back to work, okay? Have a great day, everyone, and remember to never forget.